Okay. Welcome to LDS Unmarried Life, a podcast for single members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who find themselves that way either because they're divorced, widowed, or not yet married. There is no affiliation with the church. Uh, this podcast can, well, as you can see, if you're on YouTube, uh, we are now also doing video. And uh, this week we're doing a, a, a computer meeting, <laughs> basically. But um, it's also on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, um, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. 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 And of course, thanks, Pat. And of course, AnnetteTalks.com. And um, I encourage you to go to AnnetteTalks.com, comment, um, ask questions. Uh, if you have a topic you want to hear, let me know. I'm going to be winding up this podcast over the next several months and um, starting a second podcast. So if you have a topic that I haven't covered and you want to hear it, let me know and I'll see if I can cover it before we're done here. Um, also, in case you haven't checked it out on AnnetteTalks.com, uh, there's a book that Steve Smith and I wrote called Dating After Divorce, an LDS Survival Guide. And um, I recommend you pick that up if you're out there dating. Even if you're not divorced, you're probably going to be dating a divorced person, so it would apply to you. Um, let's see what else do I need to tell you. Uh, go to Patreon.com forward slash Annette if you want to help me out. Uh, sorry, forward slash Annette Talks if you want to help me out. And if you're in the Denver area, I've been told to please plug the local activities. So go to DenverLDSSingles.org to see what's coming, uh, coming up on the calendar and um, start going out because we don't have enough people coming to these activities and uh, we all need it. So, all right, today I'm joined via computer by Pat Steele, one of my regular uh, podcasters, a good friend. Uh, brother figure. Uh, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know um, he's been on before and I interviewed him and you can go back and find that interview and other episodes that he's been on. And um, Pat requested to do this topic and it sounded like a good one. So I thought, what the heck? So he's going to be running this basically and I'm just going to ask questions um, or answer or whatever I need to do. So the show is really going to be up to Pat today. So Pat, take it away. Wow, the pressure in that, the pressure. <laughs> oh, so, and I will just tell you guys, if you have not listened to these podcasts, they're actually pretty cool. I enjoy them a lot doing them. I'm sad that they're going to be sunsetted a little bit here, but I understand, Annette, you're going to go into bigger and better things. So hopefully you'll get syndicated here in your podcast <laughs> sphere, however that works. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, Annette. Uh, just to kind of give you guys a bit, bit of a backstory. Um, Annette interviewed me back when we were at the singles conference in Orem back in June. And so my little, uh, Hey ladies, here's Pat. He's awesome. Uh, he's my brother. And, um, then apparently when that got posted onto one of the Facebook sites, um, apparently more guys were interested in me than girls, which was kind of flattering because all the guys just kept commenting and Annette and I were kind of kind of laughing about it behind the scenes. So if you go back and read some of the posts, it was rather interesting. Oh, they couldn't However, understand why a woman would be promoting a guy friend, which is silly to me. Why wouldn't you? If you have a good guy friend that you know is highly eligible and you're not dating, why wouldn't you want to promote him? So. Right. And the irony to this was the picture you put on me of me up on the um, podcast happened to be the picture that I have on my mutual page. And that is actually kind of why we're talking about a topic today, because uh, there's a gal that I actually met who saw my picture on the podcast, went to uh, Utah for some vacation, her mutuals, things all reset. And lo and behold, I popped up. And mm -hmm. so she swiped on me. So it was not mutual. It was a net talks.com. <laughs> and uh, that, yeah. that's, that's uh, what we're giving the plug for today. Um, just to give you guys a little backstory. So this gal that I'm uh, currently dating, uh, just incredible woman, just golly, she's just amazing to me. I love her to death and think the world of her. She and I were talking early on in our uh, relationship and 
now I say this relationship, meaning that this has only been a few months now since we've really been talking and uh, things have going on and I've met her in person and know pretty much everything about her backstory and things like that. One of the things I found out early on was, is that, um, she had kind of asked me a question and I kind of about my feelings for her and I kind of texted it back to her. This is kind of what I can tell you and gave her, told her what I needed to tell her. And I found out early on that she had never been talked to in that manner. As far as how I really respected her, I told her that she was a daughter of God and had some divinity and, and under, or, well, I explained to her that her divine role as a daughter of God meant a lot to me in the respect that that's how she carried herself. That's how she portrayed herself. That's what I saw in her. And I let her know that. And I told her she was beautiful and just has a countenance about her that just radiates and makes me feel really good when I talk to her. I found out that she didn't have anybody that ever told her that. Not in her previous relationship and not, you know, any dating in high school or college or anything like that. And the only person that ever talked to her like that was her dad. I was kind of shocked. And what that made me wonder was, is why do we let people not treat us the way we need to be treated? Because that was the case, it really, and I came to you in that and kind of told you some of that backstory and let you know what was going on. But the one thing that I kind of, I couldn't get out of my mind, I couldn't shake was why would somebody be in a relationship that you weren't being treated like you needed to be treated. So that was where I, I really became, that's where my thoughts really started at for this topic. A couple of things that really came across my mind is there, there could be a few reasons for that. One, Heavenly Father's telling you, you need to stay where you're at right now because there's something better coming down the line. You just need to kind of keep, keep going down that road. He's not going to give you anything you can't handle on your own. And um, for me now in my relationship with this gal, I truly feel like my whole purpose is to be there to help her or catch her when she's falling and not falling literally, but just in the figurative sense of when she emotionally needs the backup and the support. And it's, it's actually been a blessing in my life because I, I feel like that that's really one of the things that I've always wanted to do is just to be there to support somebody when they need it most. One of the things she told me early on in our relationship is that some of the difficult times that we had as far as our conversations up front were very interesting because I talked to her at a point where the conversation I didn't need to have with her happened, but that conversation was when it didn't matter. We can always do hard things when it matters, but when it didn't matter was the bigger issue. So my question, and maybe Annette, you can kind of help me kind of walk through this in my mind, but why is it that when it matters, we're able to actually step up? When it doesn't matter, we, we typically don't think about it. But when it comes to relationships and telling people, treating them that way, why is it it's usually the little things that mean the most? I'm, I'm not, sur I'm not sure, really sure if I even have an answer for this. What do you think? Well, I think when you said that she had never been treated that way before, that is pretty much the answer. A lot of us have been in relationships where, uh, especially if we're divorced, um, we're divorced for a reason. And if we were in a relationship where we were abused or neglected, then yeah, we're not used to it. Um, and so, I mean, for example, where I can remember when I was married, and I'm not gonna go into detail about the things that happened, but let's just say that I wasn't treated very well. Um, and one day I was out for a walk with my girls. I was pushing them in the triple stroller and I did this all the time. I would take them to the grocery store and I would load up the stroller with groceries and then walk at home. Like it was super good exercise. I loved that. I mean, I had a car. I could have, but I loved being out walking. This is California. It was always nice out, right? And so anyway, one day I'm walking home with the three girls in the stroller, um, groceries all down in the bottom. And um, I'm walking down the sidewalk, and of course, it's a really heavy stroller, and I get to a, a section where there's um, construction going on on the sidewalk, and so I was going to have to take the stroller down in the street, busy street, off the sidewalk, into the street, and I was like, ugh, what am I going to do? Well, this construction worker um, happened to be standing there, turned, looked at me, saw me, 
ran over, grabbed the stroller, helped me down with it without asking or anything, just grabbed it, helped me around the construction and got me back on the other side. And I have to tell you, I was so not used to be treated, being treated with kindness that I probably cried for a good 10 minutes on my way home for the rest of the way. Because you get used to expecting to be treated badly or to not be treated very kindly. And so when someone comes along with just what should be a normal amount of kindness, or and I know in your case it's extra because I know who you are, kindness, it, it really affects us because we have gotten very used to very little, and and I'm speaking for divorced people generally, and I, I you know I don't know if that's the case for people who haven't been in bad marriages or bad relationships, but when you get when several years go by where the person who's supposed to be treating you the best in the world isn't, you get accustomed to it. I mean, it's not a good thing, but you know you don't. Nobody wants to get divorced lightly. Um, sometimes some of us stayed in because we've made covenants and we have children and we want to make sure we've done everything in our power to make work before we exit. But in the meantime, a lot of time we're just holding on with our fingernails. But I can do this. I can do this. Uh, I think if we realized that what was on the other side, if we actually found a wonderful person who was willing to treat us the way we're supposed to be treated, we probably would have let go a lot sooner. But you get used to that. It's the norm. It's terrible, uh, and you probably cry a lot, but it's the norm, and you're in it until you get out of it. So I, I like for my own, in my own case, I've been divorced for four years, so I've kind of gotten used to it. But you know what? The, the first guy that showed interest in me after my divorce, I was, I was in utter amazement. I was like, wow, a quality guy likes me? I, I don't understand. Like I was literally couldn't understand it. Now I'm like, of course, <laughs> of course, quality guys like me. I don't have time for anything but quality guys. But I mean, it's taken me a while to get out of that mode of being used to being treated by uh, less than I deserve to be treated, and back to the mode of, of course, I deserve this. I'm a daughter of God. Um, I'm a good person. I'm. I, I, like, what's his name on Saturday Night Live? I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people like me. Stuart Smalley, right? Yeah, and I appreciate that. And that one of the things I'm curious about, and, and maybe you can kind of help me understand a little bit more, because I, I'll just be honest with you, my dating relationships and experiences are limited to three people, um, pretty much my whole life. Because everybody, everything other than that is girls that I've been interested in that things have just never really materialized. One of the things I noticed is for the last gal that I dated, which was back um, a few years ago, the interesting thing about that was the first time I'd actually jumped in both feet. And I'm trying to treat her the same way I'm treating um, the gal that I'm currently dating. And one of the things I noticed is, is that um, that gal was just, it, it didn't resonate with her. It, it wasn't really, I mean, I loved holding her hand. That was one of the things that I really wanted to do was just hold her hand. Um, me not having that dating experience, I had to really build up that courage to really just grab her hand and hold it. And once I did, it was just like one of the most wonderful things I was ever able to do with her. And then it, to me, for her, I don't think she really appreciated it. And so I know there was a dynamic there that really built me to know these are the things that I want in a relationship. So I, I think sometimes we actually have to go through some of the less than desirable relationships to really build up to what we want. Have you seen that with some of the things you're doing? Yeah, and I've seen that in um, other people in, in their relationships. They've told me that they were in some that were not terribly great, but they learned a ton in those relationships about themselves, about what they want in a relationship, um, about, about relationships in general, um, I mean, because, you know, a lot of us, have, you admitted to what, this is your third relationship. This, I, I'm in a relationship right now that, if I'm being totally honest, is probably my first functional relationship with a man, maybe my entire life, you know, and, and for those of us that are, and, and I don't think that our, this, 
situation that you and I are in is all that unusual. I, I podcasted earlier today with a couple of um, people about love languages. And um, one of them was a widow who's been widowed for five years. And the other was a guy who's been divorced for four. Neither one has really dated. And that's a long time. And so there's a lot of us out here who just don't have a lot of good dating experience. And so then we get into the dating uh, a relationship and it's like, uh, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And so you're, you're, you're there just trying to figure it out as you go along. I do want to put a plug in for the um, Love Languages episode, if you haven't listened to it yet. Um, we got a lot out of that book. And I recommend that, you know, especially for those of us that don't know what we're doing with dating, is learning to speak each other's love language actually helps quite a bit to recognize what yours is, recognize what the, um, the person you're dating is, what their uh, love language is, and then start speaking it to each other. But a lot of us don't. We just don't have a lot of experience or, or our experiences have been dysfunctional like mine has been. And so you get into one that is functional and you gotta learn by doing. Yeah, I agree with you on that. The learn by doing is the best way to, I think, handle that. One thing I can tell you, and this is just kind of a side note here. So I just took the love languages test this past week or actually last week. Um, hadn't taken it since I dated the girl back in 2017 and or 2016 and had a few life, life little hiccups being sick and a few other things in my life. My love languages have actually changed quite a bit. That's interesting. From what they were. Yeah, it was very interesting. However, <laughs> yeah, um, my current gal, uh, we actually have the identical love languages in the identical order. Oh, nice. You know what? That's very, very lucky because you guys will yeah. naturally, you're, that, that is one of the reasons why it's probably going so well because you don't have to sit there and work at how to treat each other because you're, you have ingrained in you how to treat each other because that's what you do. You speak your love language. So when someone speaks a different love language than you, you have to learn their love language, but you guys already know because it's your own. So that's nice. It's yeah, it's just, it's extremely comforting and comfortable to be with her and around her and even listen to her talk to me about things that the big issue, and, I, and I've talked to you about this, is that we have a very open communication with each other to where there's nothing off, off limits. There are some things that we want to hold off on talking about because um, it gets to a, a level where it's not something that's an important priority with us right now. So there are times and places that we just need to need to make sure we moderate our conversations. However, when it comes down to it overall, just to be able to go to her in this past week, for instance, having a rough time at work, just mentally, I was tapped. I'm still missing her because I saw her over Labor Day weekend and was just, I was mentally checked out. I had to leave work. And got in the car and started driving, sent her a text. I knew she was at work and asked her if she was home yet. And she responded to me and, you know, just to kind of drown my sorrows, I was at Sam's Club shopping because that, <laughs> that helps me. Wow. Helps me figure out I thought that was just time. a chick thing. Huh? No, no, no. It's a guy thing too sometimes. And I decided that I, let me try calling her again. So I got her on the phone and we talked and we, within a few minutes of just being on the phone with her, I was starting to calm down a little bit. And she just asked me, she stopped me and she said, okay, you need to tell me what's going on. And so I shared with her my frustrations and why I was where I was. And she took the time to make sure that I felt good and that she could help me wherever she could. It was pretty special to me. And I'm a guy, I mean, I, you know, you talk too much about um, touchy feely things and I got to go stand by the tools at Home Depot to feel better about life. <laughs> um, but I have to admit that having a good, strong woman stand by my side, hold my hand and tell me everything's going to be all right means a lot to me. It really does. To the point where I can honestly say this is something I've absolutely missed in my life because I've never had it in my life. 
And while I have this, to- while I'm having this topic and I'm thinking about things, there's a lot of things that guys really do want as well as girls. And the problem is, is I think sometimes we have fear in our life that doesn't allow us to actually want, think that we're worthy enough or good enough or whatever to be able to have those things. To me, that's kind of sad, not for the situation you're going through, but for the fact that that's what we've decided to settle on. I, I teach a Sunday school class at church and the youth are in there and I tell them every day, every time I teach, I don't think Heavenly Father made a single one of you mediocre. I think he did the best he could. It's up to you to decide what you want to make yourselves. And sometimes I think we settle for mediocre relationships because we think this is as good as it's going to get. Um, well, gal, she if, actually had, if you've never known any better, then um, yeah. you don't know. Right. And it's worth the time to put a list together of things that maybe things you're looking for, maybe things you're not looking for. This, I keep saying this gal. Okay. So Allison told me that I'm not the guy, I'm not the typical guy that she would have looked for when she was younger. I'm not the typical guy that she was looking for when she got older, when she got divorced. Um, The fact of the matter was that she, she dated a guy prior to me. Um, several months back that uh, didn't work out and things were fine. And she realized uh, kind of some things that she wanted. And then I came along and she had had a relationship that she learned from. And now she got into this one, not really looking in my direction before, but knowing that there was something else there. And so that's what she focused in on is what is that that I'm looking for? And because of that, we've had a just phenomenal relationship getting to know each other. And because of that, I've been able to be more open with her about pretty much anything. We can talk about a lot of things just to understand where she's coming from, where I'm coming from, and we're on the same page. So that every conversation we have right now is based off of things that we've built that are substantial in our relationship. I sent you earlier a list of, um, a list of things that she had sent me. Uh, Do you mind pulling that up and just uh, kind of reading off these things? Okay. Oops. Um, And I posted it on my Facebook page as well, kind of as a notice to um, guys that I might currently or in the future date that this is (laughs) what I want and what I like. Um, All right. So this this is just a meme, but it says things ladies want from their guy. And um, I want to, add that a lot of guys that saw this said that they want that too. So this is a what everybody wants, I think, basically. Number one, good morning and good night texts. Two, hugs from behind. Three, deep, long conversations. Four, to take pictures together. Five, little surprises. Six, saying why you love her. Seven, making her a priority. Eight, cuddling and watching TV nine random kisses and 10 the truth um i think that they threw the truth in there because they couldn't think of another 10 but and number 10 <laughs> i mean the truth is important but it doesn't really go with the rest of the um things anyway yeah i so when she sent this to me by the way you have a, a light shining on your face now so you might want to close your blinds to uh, your, your right hold on. Yeah. there we go there you go. That's better. better. Yep, that's better. That's just because uh, the spirit was in the house. Uh-huh. Um, so I will tell you, she sent this to me la- earlier this week, I want to say, maybe maybe in the last. No, it was earlier this week I sent, um, she sent it to me. And she said, everything on this list you did without, having, without me having to ask you. Okay. I'm just going to tell you, because of my lack of dating experience, I just assumed I was doing all the stuff that normal guys are supposed to do, that good boyfriends are supposed to do, that normal people do. I didn't know. I had no point of reference. Yeah. What I realized was, is no, that's not the case. And she told me, she goes, you are not the normal guy. I just assumed I always was the normal guy and this is what it was. Part of me thought to myself, well, maybe she's just not ever seen what normal truly is. When I look at this list, okay, good morning, good morning, good, uh, good night text. Yeah, that doesn't happen every day for us. 
but when it does happen, it's pretty special. It's uh, it's pretty 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 nice to get um, a text from her, and it's just always something simple between us. We use letters in the alphabet to mean certain things to us, and that's kind of our code speak. And we have different variations on that, and that's what we do. And it's the thing that we have between us that means that means a lot to us because we understand each other in that regard. The hugs from behind, gotta say, um, totally digging on that. Um, we'll say as a diabetic, if you're dating a diabetic, don't up, don't go behind them and give them a hug when they're giving themselves an insulin shot. <laughs> May not end so well. Just just tell you that. But it but it did mean a lot for that. The deep long conversations we talk all the time. We really do. We, I typically will call her when I'm on my way to work in the morning. We'll talk for about 15, 20 minutes while I get through traffic. And then she goes to work as well. Usually around lunchtime, I'll have a little bit more time to talk to her and then, you know, so on and so forth. And then at night we actually FaceTime with each other and guys and ladies, I will tell you, if you have never FaceTime with somebody, it holds, it actually adds an entire dimension to dating it really does one that i'd never worked on before to where when we were actually when we met each other we had facetimed about 17 times before we met each other face to face yeah that's if awesome you hadn't got, if you hadn't gotten everything discussed in 17 times yeah meeting them face to face if you're shocked about something that's on you because frankly for me it was like yeah finally we get to see each other for the first time and um, what, I, what I did notice is that was really important to us. I wanted to get a lot of photos with her, as many as I could, and I settled on one really good one. And it was, it was pretty amazing to see that. Little surprises, oh golly. Okay, she's told me I'm a romantic and I'm in fear of losing my man card over this. <laughs> but our little, our little code speak that we have, I actually would send her, or I put all over her house when I was there, little post-its with our, our messages, our codes and what they mean. I put those around her house where places where her kids wouldn't see them, thankfully. But then when I left, the uh, signal or the sign for um, a hug is just the letter O, which is the X's and O's version. Um, I put that on the, on the seat of her car when she went to take me to, into the airport to drop me off. Um, things like that are just simple. That doesn't require much thought. It's just something nice to do. And I'm just telling you, guys like it too, even though we pitch a fit about it, we act like we don't, it's just something nice. The other thing is like saying why I love her. Yeah, I've got a lot of reasons to love this woman. She is just amazing, amazing, amazing. I, I just can't tell you how many things about her that I just adore. Oh, and, and um, women want to hear it. I don't know if men realize that, but we, we do want to hear it. Yeah, that is a good point. All of these, all of these on this list, you know, the making her a priority, the cuddling and watching TV. Yeah. It's just nice to be able to be, be somebody, be with somebody and be in the moment. Random kisses. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> that's pretty much uh, obvious. Uh -huh. um, yeah. The truth. That's the one thing that I will tell you when you're trying to figure out where you're at in your relationship, like I kind of mentioned when it's hard to do things, You'll, you'll make it through. But when it doesn't matter and you're doing hard things, that shows character, both for guys and for women. And I will tell you that that for me was the biggest challenge I had was to basically do something hard when it didn't matter. And because of that, that's what actually opened up our communication to the point where we talk about pretty much everything. And, you know, sometimes in my mind, I think to myself, why, why do people let these things happen and why do they not want to be treated like they deserve to be treated or how can they, how can they not find somebody like that? I don't have those answers. I don't. I know that there's a journey that I went through to get to where I'm at right now. The Heavenly Father put me on that path. The one thing that um, Allison told me was is before she got on that path, she had to get herself right and get herself in that position where she understood her divine role as a daughter of God and what she understood that and believed it. That's where she let her heart open up. And that's where she was able to actually see 
all the good things around her and make her who she is as a woman today. The best part about that is, is that she's shared that with me several times about her journey and things that she's gone through. And sometimes just listening to her talk about that journey to me is just one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen because I, I hear some of the way she thought, some of the way she was talked to, and I can't see that that would be something that she had to deal with and had to put up with, but that, there was a reason for that. She made it through there, and anybody can make it through it. They just need to internalize who they truly are. And once you understand it and start believing it, when you start hearing it from somebody, that's a pretty special thing. And I've told you in that, I love you to death. And you're, I've told you how awesome of a woman you are and how great and all that stuff. I mean, I'm not going to repeat it all, even though I know, you, I know you like hearing it. Yeah, I don't mind hearing it. <laughs> but I will tell you the one thing is, is that it's a basically a respect and a communication piece that I think a lot of times in our society now, especially now, is not said enough about how good the people are standing around you. It's not a... HR issue, if you tell somebody how nice they look in an outfit sometimes, or, you know, how good of a person they truly are. But what it is, it's actually more of a human issue, where we're just treating that person with respect and actually feeling that you are worthy of that respect. That's a key that I just cannot let go of, is that if you are feeling that, no, I'm not good enough for that, hear it enough times, and hopefully you start believing it. Yeah, and I think um, this kind of goes back to you have to know the bitter to know the sweet. I think sometimes maybe yeah. that's why we've had to go through some bad relationships um, so that we would recognize good ones when they come along and that we'll know not to settle. Um, you know, if you're not getting what you want in a current relationship and you can't, can't get it, you might have to move on to another one. Um, but then when you find the one that, you have when you're in one where the other person wants to do all those things for you and does their best to do all those things for you and you you're doing them for that other person then you'll know that you're in a good relationship yeah it's it's kind of funny a lot of times i think about where i used to be and what i really wanted in, in a relationship and yeah i've only had three through girlfriends, I can call girlfriends over the last <clears throat> 32 years. And people are going to gasp at that, but that's okay. That's kind of the, uh, that's kind of the. <laughs> it's not that, it's not that abnormal. That's, I'm finding that more, the more people I talk to, people that are in relationships or who have been in a lot of relationships, they're the minority. So, and besides which, yeah. it only takes one, right? We only need the right one. It, so. It, it only does take one. And I will tell you, when I look back at the journey that I've come through to get to where I'm at now, I, and I'm not saying that this is, I don't know where this is going to lead. That's up for Heavenly Father to lead us down that path. And if it's the right thing, it's the right thing. However, the process of being able to to be told, because you know me well enough to know that I, you tell me I'm a great guy and I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, because, but now I truly believe it. What? Because you should have been believing it for me all along because I know you highly respect me as a person and you know that I have a great judge of character. So you should have been believing me all along. Oh, so Allison had to come along and tell you before you'd believe it. Hmm? Or maybe you needed three witnesses. Were there, was there someone besides me that actually told you and then uh, Allison came along and there were three of us and then you believed it? No, we're not going down that road. Okay. Um, <laughs> What I, what I will tell you is, is that coming from someone who looks at me and I can see the admiration in her eyes when she looks at me means the world. I've never really received that before in a relationship, but to see it come from someone who I know truly, truly cares for me, that's a whole different story. I see it from my friends like you and um, from Cindy, Reese which, you know, but I can tell you that seeing it and feeling it and knowing it, when they combine together, there's not a greater feeling in the world to be able to know that someone does care about you. And it might be somebody as your best friend. That might be all you receive it from. That's actually a start. 
Yeah, but if you're not, if your you're self- not in a relationship, you have to go find it elsewhere. Even yeah. If it's from good friends, brother figures, uh, <laughs> siblings, friends from church, friends from work, kids, your own kids, not other people's kids, hopefully. Uh, but that kind of thing. I mean, we talked about that in the other episode. Is it? We are responsible for finding our own happiness and um, we create what we can inside of us. But when we need people from the outside, then that means we've got to go find it because we can't, uh, if we're not in a relationship, we've got to find it somewhere. I will say this much too. If you're trying to get your spirit right and you're with somebody whose spirit is wrong, you're not doing yourself any favors. No, you got to move on. When I talked to Allison about this, one of the things she told me was is that you have to get yourself right and understand your divine role before you go out there and try to find people like that. But she says like people will attract to each other. So if you're attracting yourself some, to somebody who's less, th- less than what you deserve, you might be needing to fix yourself a little bit before you move on to that point and be confident and comfortable with who you are. That was the one thing for me, I'm comfortable with who I am. I am what I am. It's as simple as that. All right, Popeye. Yeah, thank you. Um, (laughs) The one thing I will say, though, is I really didn't truly believe that until she started telling me. And I know that kind of doesn't sound right because I'm pretty confident as a guy. But what I wasn't confident in is was I a guy that mattered to a girl? Mm. And that's where I think some of us do, do struggle. And I think sometimes we look at, Oh, well, this person's taking an interest in me. Oh, wow, this this is something special. But if you're being separated from your friends and from your identity and who you are, I have never seen one relationship ever in in a an eternal marriage that's gonna last forever. Every single time they've been isolated, been unhappy, not being treated the way they are, it always ends in divorce or worse. And I'm gonna just tell you that for me being treated like the way I've been treated from her really did impress me with the fact that one, I never thought I, I never really thought of myself that I was really that great of a catch. I knew I had a lot of great attributes and qualities. I know that that's, that's pretty much common. I mean, go back and listen to my podcast. Um, (laughs) I'm still waiting on my Annette Talks quilt, by the way. Yes. You'll be waiting a little bit longer. (laughs) You know the so colors. Is, There's the colors. I, I see the colors. Uh-huh. Um, I don't think I can put the Mick Jagger lips on them, though. That's all right. Um, what, I'll, what I'll say is this much, is, is that we really need to consider what we truly want. Do we want someone who looks at us in complete admiration and feeling like we're better than sliced bread? Or do we want somebody who is mediocre at best? That's the one thing that I realize is that when it comes to relationships and when it comes to being able to accept people that are around there, you got to bring your A game and your A game starts with the within. All right. Great. Thank you, Pat. We're going to wrap it up right there. Um, So I think the main uh, takeaway from this people is um, don't settle for less than what you deserve in a relationship and don't give less than what you can when you're in that relationship and um, we all deserve the best and we all deserve to be with someone that, that will truly adore us and show us that they adore us. And um, amen. I always want to say, I always, I always feel like I'm wrapping up gospel doctrine because I teach and like I want to bear testimony at the end with anyway. No, just throw your hands up. Preach sister. Preach. preach, preach. All right. Thank you, Pat, for joining us. Um, Again, you can find this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube, and Annette Talks. Um, Thank you for listening to LBS Unmarried Life, where LBS singles gather.